Today, I've got a brand new tool for you that is gonna help you more quickly and more effectively deal with artifacts from hypersaturated colors in your images. Let's dive into Resolve and take a look at this new tool. So to give you a sense for what this tool does, for the problem that it's solving, I wanna show you a feature from the most recent release of ACES. Now, don't worry, this isn't an ACES video. We're not gonna be diving deep into ACES, but I do need to show you this feature because this feature is exactly what I've borrowed and incorporated into this tool for use outside of ACES. So let's get a look at, first of all, the problem that this feature solved. So take a look at this image here. Right now, I'm looking at a log state version of this image that needs to be color managed or it needs to be normalized, right? For the moment, we are going to do that using ACES so that I can show you a problem that ACES users have had to deal with for a long time. I'm going to go to ACES 1.2, which is the release of ACES prior to the most recent release, and let's watch what happens when we hit save here. Okay, cool. We've got a normalized image, we've got contrast, we've got saturation going on, but we have a problem as well, don't we? Check out this neon tube down here at the uh, bottom middle of the frame. We've got this crazy artifacting happening on the tube, right? What's going on here? The colors, the pixels in this tube are out of gamut for the ACES working space, and they're being allowed to slam into the wall and beyond, and they're producing a problematic result. They're producing this ugly artifact. Here's how they solved that in ACES 1.3 after ACES users having to deal with it for a long time. The ACES uh, virtual working group for gamut compression came together and came up with a really good solution for dealing with pixels that are out of gamut for the ACES working space. We can see how this works if we go to ACES version 1.3 and we simply leave this default checkbox for apply ACES reference gamut compress turned on. If we go in here and we hit save, you can see it does a really good job of cleaning up that nasty artifact that I was looking at just a moment ago. And I can tell you from experience that this gamut compression scheme does a really consistently clean and effective job of dealing with gamut excursions out of gamut values when you're working in ACEs. In fact, it does such a good job that after using it for a while, I started to get curious and wonder, would there be a way to use this outside of an ACEs workflow and that's what I figured out how to do, and that's what I've incorporated into this tool that I'm gonna share with you today. By the way, there's gonna be a link to download it in the description for today's video. So let's now take a look at how we can use this tool, this feature outside of ACES. I'm gonna go back into my project settings, and I'm gonna set my color science back to my normal Resolve color management workflow that I typically work in here on the channel. And I'm gonna go in and very quickly set my settings to their stock positions. If you wanna learn more about what I'm doing and why, I've got lots of good content here on the channel uh, dedicated to that subject. But for now, I'm simply gonna switch things over and then hit save and look at the change in the image here. Now you can see because DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate is a different color management framework, it's gonna produce a slightly different visual result. And in fact, it's not producing necessarily the exact same gamut excursion that we were seeing before, or the same artifact that we were seeing before in this particular image. However, regardless of the color management framework that you are using, there are going to be situations that arise. There are going to be shots that you encounter that have these sort of gamut excursions, these sort of gamut clipping issues and the artifacts that come along with them. And they can be really difficult to deal with without adversely affecting the rest of your image. That's why I'm so excited to share this tool with you today because it's gonna give you a really quick and easy way of dealing with those artifacts. So for a great example, Let's look over here at shot number two and check out these Christmas lights over here. Ugh, I don't love what I'm seeing there. That's not looking great, right? And really what I wanna do to uh, articulate the goal, I wanna deal with the kind of like nasty contouring that I'm seeing here, especially in this red light, but really in uh, several of these Christmas lights. I wanna deal with this, I wanna smooth this out without really affecting the rest of my image. I've still got to grade this image. I've got other things that I want to do for it. I've got a creative agenda for it, but I want to have a bumper, a guard in place that says, hey, as colors start to go out of gamut, smoothly compress them back into gamut so as to avoid artifacts like we're seeing right now. So let's check out this tool and how well it does with dealing with artifacts like these. I'm going to go over to my effects tab over in the upper right. And I'm gonna to go to my DCTL. I've just spotlighted or uh, searched for DC to find my DCTL. And I'm gonna drop this onto an empty node. 
By the way, this should be the last node in your node graph. So when I do begin grading this shot, I'm going to do all of my grading in nodes off to the left of this node that I've just uh, created, node number four. Here in node number four, with my DCTL list that I now have available because I've dropped a DCTL plugin onto this node, I'm going to find CKC Gamut Compress. Okay. And when I do, I'm going to switch my working space over from ACES CCT to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate because that's my working space. All right. Now, I want you to notice I've got all these sliders and parameters incorporated into this tool. And we didn't see any sliders or parameters when we implemented the ACES reference gamut compression, did we? It was all just a checkbox. It was just off or on, right? Well, if I didn't do anything else here to uh, this DCTL or to this plugin, I would be looking at the stock or the reference values that are being used in the case of that reference gamut compression. But I chose to include these parameters that were included in the original design of the gamut compression scheme that this ACES virtual working group came up with, because I do think it's useful to have access to them if you have a particularly tricky shot that you're trying to deal with. And before I go any further, I want to emphasize this code, this math, this development, this is not my idea. This was something that was uh, developed by the ACES virtual working group. They did an amazing job on it. All I did was translate it so that you could use it outside of ACES and inside of a DaVinci wide gamut workflow like we're using here today. Let me walk you through what these parameters here are really doing so that you do have a sense for uh, how they work if you do want to go in and adjust them. But before we even do that, let's just zoom back in on our Christmas lights and observe that we've solved a good portion of the problem. Things are looking a lot better than they did a moment ago, right? And I can tell you from experience, even getting just to this level of a result on this particular shot, because I've spent a lot of time trying to deal with the gamut clipping that you are seeing here, even getting to this point can be really, really tricky. And it takes a combination of feeling your way through multiple tools and different control points. So this is already a really rapid, really successful result. And we're simply going to look at the possibility of maybe enhancing it further by playing around with our parameters within the uh, plugin that we're looking at now. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my overlay graph on because this is going to give me a good visual for what I'm doing. Now, simplest way to read the graph that we're looking at here is this horizontal line represents our gamut boundary. So things below this line, colors below this line are good. Colors outside of this line, we want to deal with. We want to roll them in or compress them back into gamut, okay? And slightly confusingly, we are dealing with cyan, magenta, and yellow here. You can see my cyan, magenta, and yellow curve. And you can see that things are labeled in terms of cyan, magenta, and yellow. Why is that? Don't we typically work in RGB when we're color grading? Well, we do. But if you think about gamut clipping, one sensible definition of gamut clipping is values of red, green, and or blue that fall below zero, right? And because the complement of red is cyan and the complement of green is magenta and the complement of blue is yellow, that's really what we're dealing with is colors that have dropped below the floor of red, green, and or blue, which we can think of as cyan, magenta, and yellow, respectively. So that's why we have CMY instead of RGB. And really all that we are doing here with all of our parameters in this gamut compression plugin is telling the gamut compression plugin three things. We're telling it, how far out of gamut would you like me to go hunting for pixels and try to pull them back in? We are telling it how far into the core, into the in gamut portion of the image, do you want my curve to be altered in order to pull those pixels smoothly back in? And finally, we are going to control the overall shape of the curve or the shoulder of the curve with this power slider here. And again, I want to emphasize, you don't have to be an expert in the parameters that I'm talking about right now to get a great result out of this tool. I simply want to give you a bit of uh, orientation or context for these parameters if you do want to play with them. Okay, so let's just take a look at this image and see if we can't use these parameters to our advantage to get an even better result. What I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to start by playing around with my magenta threshold. And as you can see in the graph, this is defining how far into the core of the gamut am I going to allow this compression scheme to uh, draw the curve in order to pull things back in bounds. So if I go to a threshold of one, I'm going to have a completely hard edged curve, as you can see here. And if I go to a zero, all of my in gamut colors are going to be 
changed slightly, or at least they're going to be changed up to whatever limitation was devised when the scheme was cooked up. Okay. But this is something that we can play around with. And you can see as I do, especially if I turn my overlay off, you can see this is actually affecting just how smooth I'm able to get things, especially here on this red Christmas light. Okay. So threshold is the first thing that you can play with. And by the way, it's nice to have a bit of an understanding of how these things work as I'm trying to give you right now, but you can also just go in and move sliders around. If you're able to get a visual result that you like, you don't need to worry about whether you did it correctly. If you're getting a result that you like, you're doing it correctly. Okay. So I want you to have a little bit of context, but you don't need to be an expert to make good use of these sliders. And again, as I said, you don't even have to modify the sliders at all if you want to, because if you don't, you're essentially getting exactly what you would get in aces, which is a stock set of positions for those sliders. But in this case, I am going to mess around with these things a little bit because I feel like moving that magenta threshold is helpful. And then just to orient you to the remaining sliders here, if you look at these sliders that are just called cyan, magenta, and yellow, these are the other part of the equation that I mentioned a moment ago that is essentially defining, well, how far beyond the edge of the gamut do you want me to go looking for pixels? Do you want me to look a little ways out? Do you want me to look really, really far outside of the gamut? So this is something that uh, is parked at a sensible default, but you might be able to get even better results by modifying for one or more of these channels. So in this case, I don't think there's much benefit that I'm going to find here, maybe increasing my magenta a little bit. The yellow probably isn't going to have much effect. So I'm really not making much change there. Um, and then the last thing that I want to show you is the power slider. This is really that third parameter that I mentioned a moment ago that's going to control the shoulder of this curve. And again, this can be a good way to get your color that you do want to retain sort of smoothly back into these pixels without returning to that sort of like hard contoured and uh, chunky feeling transition from in gamut or from, uh, you know, like more saturated to slightly less saturated colors. So that's something else that you can play with, with a little bit of the context that I'm giving you today, or you can just go in there and move things around and see how they're feeling. Okay. Of course, make sure you turn your overlay graph back on, uh, back off rather before you move on from your shot, because that's not something that you want to render in your final shot. But that's the basics there. We are simply taking the really well-built ACES gamut compression scheme that was released with ACES 1.3. And I've created a version of it for you that works outside of ACES and gives you a bit more granular control over the parameters of that gamut compression scheme so that you can bring colors that may be out of gamut, that may be causing artifacting smoothly back into gamut quickly and effectively and without adversely affecting anything else in your image that you want to see stay the same. Because again, here in this shot, I haven't even done any grading yet, right? I've of course got all kinds of grading that I want to do. I'm going to do that again off here to the left as opposed to off to the right of this. And all that this tool is doing for me is ensuring that any colors that do reach my gamut boundary or beyond are going to be smoothly pressed back on, compressed back inside of my gamut boundary and in doing so avoiding any kind of artifacting that I wouldn't want to see. So I'm leaving a link to this tool in the description for today's video. Uh, give it a download, give it a try for yourself, see what you think and see if it's helpful to you when you're dealing with edge cases like this, where you have a really saturated, really bright pixel or set of pixels or feature in your frame that you want to quickly and effectively bring back in bounds without getting uh, completely stalled out and getting stuck trying to solve uh, a problem that can be really difficult if you don't have the right tool. Hopefully this is a great tool for you as it is for me. I know it's one that I'm really glad I have in my toolbox for dealing with these kinds of issues when they come up.